an elder uh, statesman and uh, he has a feeling that with the 70s support uh, the, the young ones in Kuwait will, uh, uh, will follow. Um, traditionally Tanzanians when they are dealing with Kenyans have always followed the wait and see uh, approach and uh, a few weeks back there were rumors that they are fronting the former president uh, Jakaya Kikwete. I don't know how far that uh, uh, that went. Th th that one was in the, in the, in the grapevine. Uh, but um, Prof, we have already exported our uh, yeah. way of doing politics uh, yeah. to this continental uh, uh, competition. Uh, but I also have a feeling that um, uh, we, we seem to be overkilling. Uh, you, you know, we are overly uh, uh, ambitious over a post that I don't see uh, to be as big as we are trying to make it in the country. Uh, the, the chairman of uh, the, the African um, the, 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 the AU Commission uh, is actually a CEO, which is much lower than the high profile political position. Uh, that the Right Honourable uh, Prime Minister is, 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 is used to. Uh, and uh, as you said, um, uh, you, you know, is it a way of uh, getting him rid of uh, from the Kenyan political scene? Uh, there are some people who are feeling that um, <coughs> the kind of welcome that he has received within government circles uh, he's suspect. He, he, you know, it's like <laughs> welcoming a boat uh, to a dinner by wolves, if, 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 if it were. So, so uh, that, that's why I'm saying we are overblowing the significance of uh, uh, the, the CEO of the AU, uh, because he will be uh, somebody controlled by the, the politicians who are the presidents, uh, including the, chair, uh, the, 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 the overall President who is the chairman of the African Union. Um, and um, I was just wondering whether it is worth the publicity mm. uh, if only to wink uh, the former prime minister to leave the political scene, uh, uh, you know, for uh, the current regime to enjoy. Thank and you. Uh, uh, how far that will go is yet to be seen. All right. Uh, Interesting choice of words. Hoodwinked. Uh, yeah, this is what uh, Dr. Obongi said. Do you think uh, he's being hoodwinked? Professor Bashar, good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, you, you can you. tell us also, I think last uh, week uh, you're out of the country making a very interesting presentation in a delegation. You will inform us. Yes? yes Welcome um, back. Thank you. Um, hoodwinking, I don't think you can do hoodwink right <laughs> By nature, he is an hoodwinkable. <laughs> <laughs> but he likes publicity. And he, he likes publicity. And he likes uh, the high flying, the, 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 the attention. He likes that. Yes. And uh, this position, if it comes to him, will be one of those high flying places as an alternative to something else. Eh? Mm -hmm. the, altern the, the something else is the presidency of Kenya. And he wants to be president. <laughs> it doesn't matter what that happens, he wants to be president. So even if he gets that position, and there is a chance that he might be elected mm -hmm. in 2027, you see him there mm -hmm. as a candidate. And should he be lucky enough to win the presidency at the time, he'll be very happy because he will be president. His Excellency by right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and making all those things. That's what he wants. So these are the things that are alternatives that he can entertain for a while. Uh, but, and I think even some of his brother, uh, Oburu, I've said, you people stop those things. Yeah? Raila is going nowhere. That's what they have said. Mm -hmm. And he himself has repeated it. After all, if he gets it, it's a but it's just here. It's two hours flight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are you talking about? <laughs> so anyone who has those funny ideas that um, you are going to get rid of Raila by giving him um, an office in Addis Ababa, Mm. You are lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. That will not happen. So there is that um, uh, possibility. But it's a good entertainment. Eh? Uh, 
for, for us here. <laughs> We're talking about it. It's good TV. Yeah, it's good TV. <laughs> <laughs> and he likes it. <laughs> he likes it. And then uh, once he thinks he's uh, making a mistake, he goes back and says, no, don't, don't think that way. I'm here, eh? <laughs> uh, to remain relevant to the political scene. Uh -huh. the, the, that he's not going to stop being relevant. Uh -huh. uh, he's a maneuverer, manipulator, and he's very good uh -huh. at some of those things. Uh -huh. Those who underestimate him end up underestimating him. <laughs> so, he knows, um, so that's what I say about that. Um, now the reference to um, I was out in Moscow, <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, there was uh, some discussions about multipolarity. Yes. And uh, so I happened to be there, so he said my little piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, in the region where you are, they were not. Uh... <laughs> uh, it, it, it was good. It was a good conglomeration of people, uh, various countries, uh, discussing the issue of the, word, the nature of the word power, and, uh, who is doing what or not doing what. Uh, the essence of it was to discuss the alternative to unipolarity. Or singularity, like mm -hmm. call it. You have one part that thinks it is everything and it controls everything. So people are asking questions is that really the case? Or have we uh, changes that are taking place, serious changes? And um, the idea of singularity is under threat. Mm -hmm. Because every other country is saying, wait a minute, like, uh, we are not under you. Yeah. Even if you want to, we are not under you. The alternative centers, eh? Mm. The, the Chinese would like to be an alternative center. The Russians would like to be an alternative center. Uh, the Indians, who are bogus friends, mm. <laughs> 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 think that they are also an alternative center. Yes. <laughs> the Brazilians, and even the South Africans and Kenya would like to be seen somewhere nearby. <laughs> so the, the idea of multipolarity, that uh, there are different places, uh, centers that people can look up to. Mm -hmm. uh, can, the countries in the world can look up to. So the notion that one country can be dictating to everybody is out of the window. That, 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 and so you have these people who are discussing that very possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, the application of it is, of course, is another matter. Eh? Yes. But the very idea is spreading very fast. That um, should those people in the conceptual West mm -hmm. We imagine that everything has always to be the way of the conceptual world, mm -hmm. <laughs> out of their mind, because mm -hmm. that is gone. And then you see, we have more and more thinking about alternative centers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the discussion about the BRICS is another way of looking at what? Alternative mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> to the conceptual West as the center of mm -hmm. So that's what um, the conference was all about. All right. And I happened to show up. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I said my piece, <laughs> raising the question about the global south. Eh? Uh -huh. Exactly what is it? <laughs> and if there is that, then um, where is the center of the global south? Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. um, we pointed out that um, the very concept of the global south is not a geographical one. Mm -hmm. It's big, bigger than that. It's beyond geography. Because you have countries in north of the equator, they are considered to be part of the what? Mm -hmm. Global south. And you have some countries um, in the east, like Australia, New, New Zealand, and, uh, and Japan, mm -hmm. who appear as if they are part of the conceptual west. Eh? Mm -hmm. They behave as if they are west, although they are in the east. So these are uh, the meanings of um, the geography changes in terms of meanings when it comes to geopolitics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, that, that, so those kind of discussions come up and say, maybe right. you need to redefine terms. Indeed, indeed. In, in, in order to make sense. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's hear from uh, mm. Peter Kagwanja. I want to just to gravitate the discussion briefly, uh, even as we're still talking about East Africa uh, legisl Legislative assemb Assembly and how also the input of it just being here in the country, what is that? It does really portend. But the entry of Somalia now officially mm. Uh, having now assigned the Treaty of Accession to, uh, to join the, the community. What does that really now portend moving forward? Uh, what are the, the dynamics, just mm. briefly, mm. Uh, before we continue? No, no, um, the, f the first thing is that um, the entry of Somalia brings uh, like increased the number 
of, the, of member states of the East African community. Remember, we still have a problem of um, uh, overlaps in terms of royalties to Rex. Mm -hmm. So although the East African community would claim to have, you know, uh, eight members, uh, practically it has six because uh, Congo is in SADC and uh, Tanzania is in SADC. Uh, even though it's a core member of the East African community. But when it comes to loyalties, uh, one can say without any fear of contradiction that Tanzania is more royal to SADC and to the East African community because it's considered as a larger market uh, for, for, for itself. Of course, for Kenya, we have no alternative. We, it's like uh, the, 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 the cog in the center of the wheel. There's no, there's no choice of where which part of the world to be in, it has to be at the core, and that's Kenya for the East African community. So, and, and the addition of Somalia basically uh, it enhances Kenya's centrality in this, in, in this matter, because now, uh, as one of the countries that sponsored heavily the entry of Somalia into the East African community, uh, what it means is that uh, we stand to benefit. Uh, remember, in, in, in intellectual terms, Somalia is a country emerging, emerging from conflict and therefore undergoing a reconstruction. And you've seen the world, the, the IMF uh, and the World Bank and other international financial organizations re, re, uh, kind of lifting the debt out of Somalia. Somalia has now, uh, you know, the, the, the arms embargo has been removed as well. And, 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 and the country now seems to be uh, almost moving, uh, normalizing, so to say. And, and what that means is that there are a lot of jobs for the reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that, to me, is Kenya's uh, northern frontier, if we utilize it very well. Uh, the jobs that uh, are to be created, particularly in the, reconstruction, in the construction industry, construction of roads, construction of houses. Uh, in IT, the, the Kenyans are providing, even as we speak, there are very many Kenyans in, in Somalia doing those kind of jobs. I, the, the last time I, 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 I counted, uh, we, we were going above 50,000 in, 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 in Mogadishu alone, uh, largely in the IT sector. Uh, obviously, uh, we are seeing the transition of Somalia uh, from what was to be called AMISOM, then to ATMIS, and now at least is supposed to exit by the, the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Somalia has said very clearly that it is not ready to, to, to kind of deal with uh, Al-Shabaab by itself, even to keep law and order within its own boundaries. And therefore, the East African, an East African force is a possibility. You do know that uh, Somalia has signed uh, you know, a, a deal, and a kind of a security pact with Uganda. And Uganda is one of the major troop contributing countries to Somalia. Mm -hmm. uh, Burundi is a member of the East African community mm -hmm. and is another major troop contributing uh, country, uh, country to Somalia. Kenya is part of the East African community and it's a t larger troop contributing country. Um, I think Ethiopia, I mean, I mean uh, Somalia wouldn't mind Ethiopia uh, withdrawing its forces given their current tension. Over the, over the border territory. Mm -hmm. Djibouti is not in the East African community, but identity-wise, it's part mm -hmm. of Somalia. It, it's a very correlated to Somalia um, in that regard. So the, the big issue here is that I think one would comfortably say that uh, Somalia is an added value to East African community. Uh, but the potential of Somalia has not been tapped, particularly in the fishing industry. Uh, with the largest coastline of about uh, that, that the three uh, three thousand three hundred, uh, you know, from the top to to, to the Kenyan border, um, Somalia has largest potential o on fisheries. And remember, almost ninety percent of Somalis, I would say so, are pastoralists. And one of the Somali friends on a writer note told me that uh, Somalia is one of the very few countries in the world where fish die of old age. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's born, it's born, it's uneaten, 
-huh. and then they just <laughs> die <it> in sleep <laughs> peacefully. <laughs> peacefully. <laughs> that, that cannot happen in India. <laughs> no, you know, because, uh, I mean, by nature, pastoralists are not very good at fish eating. So it, 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 now they are. Um, I, have, I have my friends who are eating shrimp and so on, but that's very untypical of pastoralists, as it were. So traditionally, uh, fish, I think, was more of something to watch, something to enjoy looking at, not yes. something that you eat. Just like the way there are many animals in the wild which we don't eat. Not, not that they cannot be eaten, but for us, it's, they, are not in, they are not on the menu. Uh, so uh, this time, uh, then the fish can become a major import uh, for many East African countries from Somalia and we stopped importing from outside the, the, the continent. So Somalia has added value. But of course, it also brings its own competition with them and the differences within East African community. Now you see we have two candidates, the East African community, the, com the heads of state have to decide. Mm -hmm. uh, so both, uh, the, both the Arabs, Ruto and Raida, are basically trying to, to jump the gun. The truth of the matter is, yes, the seat is for the East African community. But for the rest of the heads of state to accept a candidate yeah. from the region, it has to be high quality. Yes. Uh, and, and, and I don't think Kenyans are right to them, uh, good to themselves or right, I mean, uh, on the right path. When we take it that uh, for political convenience, you shut up. Mm -hmm. If we don't have a candidate in the region who fits the, the bill, we should be able to say so. Not because I really think it's my friend or is my boss, uh, you know, and so on, but just State it as it is because you you are a father, you are a grandfather. Don't don't make uh, lies part of the, the tradition or the, the, the legacy that you are going to leave your, to your kids. See it as it is. The Handa Institute will not deliver uh, the city to Raira. You'll have to, to basically address that handle. Two, Ruto is the chair mm -hmm. of the Institute, I mean, institutional reform for the African Union, the seat that was previously held by Kagame, and by my estimation, the second most powerful position after the chair of the African Union Commission. We do know that one of the reasons, among the many reasons mm -hmm. why Amina was not uh, elected, was because uh, Erastas Muencha mm -hmm. was the deputy mm -hmm. okay. of the African Union at the, t at the time that Amina was vying for that seat, right? Mm -hmm. That one we know. That's a fact we know. We also do know that uh, the other reason why she lost was because Musa Faki was more superior in terms of the peerage and also in terms of experience. Mm -hmm. Musa Faki had been a foreign minister for Chad right. for a couple of years. Musa Faki was the prime minister of Chad for a couple of years. And Musa Faki holds mm -hmm. a master's degree in public law. Yes, he holds a, a degree. He holds a first degree in public law and a second degree in public law. So a master's. No, yes, Dr. Hassan Kanenji is out of order. No, no uh, not uh, out of order. Uh, but it's, <laughs> yeah, we don't, it's, it's like Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping did not uh, yeah. emphasize. Um, I mean, not uh, Jinping did not mm -hmm. emphasize his uh, doctorate. Yes, and he had a doctorate in economics. Dramini mm -hmm. uh, Zuma. First and foremost, as a wife of a president, the PRH is already high and she had multiple degrees. Now, the first one, Alpha Konare, had a PhD, he was a historian, uh, yes, an archaeologist. Right. Yeah. Literally, his, yes. his, his, his equal number in academic terms, yeah. right? And that's why he, he was there. So, to be out of the ordinary, to, to find anything else uh, not obtaining. But the most important thing to remember, and this is was stated by... Oh yeah, briefly as we take yes, a short Yes, yes, I'll do that very quickly. The job being sought is the job of the CEO, CEO. Mm -hmm. which is two, three notches below the head of state. The head, we have the head of state, the chair of the summit. summit. Mm -hmm. Then we have the AU executive, which is basically the cabinet that would be elected at the same time as others are being elected. And, F, and the, the CEO, who is the, uh, the, the chair of the commission, is answerable to the two bodies. Mm. So this is literally an errant boy. Mm -hmm. and, and then you make a big issue out of an errant boy. <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> you know, you know, All right. Let's <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, this is literally an errant boy. Finally, so finally yeah, let's, 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 put, let's put it this way. It is not in order 
to take a CEO job that requires 24 hours in a day, and then this is what AU is. It's not an issue to hold a, to, to a summit to be going on at you know 4 a.m. Those who have attended the African mm -hmm. Union meetings, 4 a.m. Uh, in, in, in fact, this is this is the time Gaddafi preferred uh, when he was alive. Uh, three o'clock, four o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's right. what he's Now, Raida will be eight years, one month by the time he's voted in. And he has four years to go to the four. And the whole, the whole period is supposed to be eight years. I mean, is this is it really the right choice to be a CEO at eight, at eight one or almost eight one years? I don't think so. It's not the right choice. Let people advising the prime minister, the former prime minister, look for something useful not to send him to exile in his age. <laughs> right. Has uh, so Somalia really spoken to Peter Kagwanja? On this particular position, so that uh, yeah, for Zia may just have a smooth, a, a smooth sailing for her position. But uh, before we take a short break, I just wanted to show you that we know that uh, as it, it stands right now, the Prime Minister of Haiti, this is Ariel Henry, is in Puerto Rico. Uh, where he's taking refuge. This happened before, and maybe this is informing why he cannot land in his own country right now. Just take a look. You saw this. New video emerging. <laughs> Haitian Prime Minister and Acting President Ariel Henry and his security team coming under heavy gunfire on Saturday in an assassination attempt at an event commemorating the country's Independence Day. His team can be seen trying to shield him with a bulletproof vest while scrambling to take cover behind a vehicle. Then, with gunfire still erupting, the group in a dash running to their caravan of vehicles. The car is speeding away, the prime minister safe inside. Local media reports saying one person was fatally shot, two injured, but an official casualty count has not been released. The gunman still unknown. The prime minister's office saying that, quote, bandits and terrorists had tried to shoot Henri. This comes just months after the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse back in July by a group of armed men. Prime Minister Henri became the de facto leader of the country less than two weeks later. Haitian authorities have arrested 18 Colombians and two Haitian Americans in connection with Moïse's killing. But just this week, another suspect was detained by U.S. authorities in Panama. Gang violence, kidnappings, bloody protests over food and fuel shortages, and a devastating earthquake last year have shaken the vulnerable Caribbean nation to its core. And now, another blatant attack to the country's highest office as the nation struggles to rebuild. All right, we have...